Well, in the arsenal of freedom, um, Picard and crew uh, went and visited the planet Magrathea. <laughs> if you're familiar with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there's a similar uh, approach to this, albeit uh, different, uh, well, different modes of industry, uh, where Magrathea was an ancient planet that built other planets. Uh, and that was their business. And as the uh, starship Heart of Gold arrived to the planet, uh, a recorded message would play telling them they were closed for business and to turn away and all that. Well, in uh, Star Trek, uh, the recorded message actually invites them saying, hey, we've got the best deals <laughs> in weapons. So that was uh, their business. But uh, it was a long time ago and no one's heard from them. But the Enterprise is sent there because a previous ship, uh, the starship Drake, had gone there to investigate the planet and uh, disappeared. So, uh, oh, gee, I, I wonder what happened. So the way team beams, beams down and they encounter this uh, drone that attacks them, uh, imprisons Riker in a uh, force field and uh, jams communications of Picard and Dr. Crusher beam down. Um, and end up falling down a pit and, and in, into some ruins and whatnot. And you, you're beginning to realize, oh, the, the weapons became self-aware and wiped out <laughs> the population. They didn't become self-aware, but they're programming, uh, demonstrating uh, how powerful they were for, for salesmanship uh, went too far. And, of course, uh, you, you also see what became of the Drake, uh, it, it was destroyed and their crew and the crew wiped out and all that uh, by these weapons uh, because, well, they didn't have data for one thing <laughs> who, of course, uh, is able to access uh, the information within the old computers that Picard uh, discovers. But data is the one who has to, you know, communicate with it and whatever. And um, Ultimately, the the trick of getting out of the demonstration that was lethal because, and this is like a a, a precursor to the Borg uh, 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 adapting to phasers and whatnot. So at first, a, a single phaser shot would take one out. Then it takes two. Then they need three. <laughs> and then eventually, it's like, oh, geez. <laughs> now, it's not going to work. Meanwhile, one of the drones was attacking the Enterprise as well. They took this... Uh, 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 moment to uh, make use of their uh, pre-purposed uh, footage of the uh, saucer section separating and all that so the Jordy could lead the ship back into battle while the rest, most of the you know, passengers <laughs> were taken to safety and um, so uh, ultimately the, the way out was to say hey, good demonstration, we're interested in buying the weapon and so there you go that ends the demonstration. If only the crew of the Drake had thought of it. <laughs> uh, but they didn't. Uh, Picard did. And uh, so there you go. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, and Jordy, I don't understand why the demonstration didn't end in orbit. Jordy had to uh, destroy the other uh, drone, but whatever, you know. But um, it was just so Worf could be happy that he got something because they tried to shoot it earlier. <laughs> and on, for whatever reason, this is always stuck in my mind. It's like they fire, but it, uh, they miss. And so Worf, we missed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the episode's not bad. It's 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 okay. Uh, I'm off, uh, and I've often been very uh, well kind to uh, the sets. This was a complete uh, soundstage thing because it's reminiscent of the original show. But this one in particular was pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was just the blue background was too much. Uh, but, I mean, again, uh, have you ever been on an alien planet? So how do you know what it's going to look like? So, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, uh, Boy, the Asian girl that was piloting the ship, she was cute. Yeah, you know, nice curly hair and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but Jordy's in command, so this is a moment to see him take command and, you know, operate under that stress and everything. Meanwhile, they're rotating uh, engineers, so this engineer comes up and uh, says, I outrank you, Jordy. I should be in command. And then he's countering everything. Uh, well, it's not everything. It's rather brief, and the guy's not that great of an actor. Uh, but 
uh, Jordy is still trying to fight off uh, the drone, and the guy is saying, huh, you don't know what you're doing. You're in over your head. So uh, Jordy maintains his command, but at the same time, he calls up the engineer when he comes up with the idea of, I've got to separate the saucer section, you know, and all that. Uh, so the guy comes up, but at first he says, all right, uh, he tells the pilot to set coordinates for the star base. And then the engineer says, so you're just going to abandon the way team. But <laughs> that's what you were going to do, stupid. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <laughs> he tells him he's in command of the saucer section. They'll take, uh, you know, the, the tail section <laughs> of the ship to continue the battle and try to save the away team, which eventually they do. So, eh, you know, like I said, it, it's all right. And it's a, it the concept of, you know, old weapons, you know, uh, still functioning and how what the danger was, which is also reminiscent of the Doomsday Machine, which Kurt theorized was must have been from another galaxy and it's just been <laughs> continuing on long after it wiped out its creators and the enemy and continues to destroy planets <laughs> but anyway so it, it, it was fine uh, the other significant thing is uh th there's this moment where it, it appears that beverly admits she has feelings for captain picard uh, I seem to recall that there was there was going to be more open about it, and she would tell P Picard, but uh, that you know, they decided not to, or Roddenberry didn't want to, or something like that. Um, I think it was this one, but uh, but anyway, so you know, okay, so they're you know they're laying down the groundwork that there's a potential relationship between the two, and there's all you know there's already something there, but, but before the show even begins, so but they never really sealed the deal <laughs> until. You know, third season of Picard, but yeah, a little late. So that was the arsenal of freedom. I don't know. This was would have been eighty seven, so maybe it was a a dig at Reagan's STI plans, <laughs> but <laughs> but it works on its own uh, today uh, for for what it is, and it's uh, you know conceptually anyway. So uh, the next episode is uh, conceptually again. Oh, and I've always thought this that the uh, early se uh, seasons of Next Generation uh, conceptually uh, uh, were good. Uh, it's just the execution wasn't always up to snuff, uh, in in my opinion. But uh, this one, uh, well, it gets a little sidetracked in basically breaking, damn near breaking the fourth wall to tell you the message. <laughs> But uh, this one we call uh, Symbiosis, and the other interesting thing about it is that it features actors who were in Wrath of Khan, uh, playing totally different characters, of course, uh, but that would be the actor who played uh, uh, Kirk's son, and then the guy who, I don't know if he was supposed to be Khan's son, <laughs> probably a little too old, because I think it was only supposed to be a 15-year span between when uh, Khan was abandoned and all that. Uh, but, you know, it was certainly uh, Khan's uh, protege or what have you and all that. Uh, but the two of them, there they are. It's just kind of interesting. <laughs> it's like, well, hey, you guys are familiar with Star Trek. You know what to do. Yeah, 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 we got it. <laughs> so anyway, um, very simply, the Enterprise goes to uh, examine uh, a, a volatile uh, star uh, and all this, and it's uh, interfering with their uh, electrical work and whatnot. Meanwhile, there's another ship that's uh, not as advanced, it's in trouble and needs help. And so they say, hey, what's the problem? And the, but the crew is coming across as very stupid and ignorant of how ships work. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> how'd you even get this thing to run, you know? And uh, and so they decide, well, we're going to have to try to beam them over. They're going to burn up in the atmosphere and all that. So that's, that's what they end up doing, but they can't save everybody. But the two survivors, or well, four survivors, uh, all they're concerned about is the cargo. They say, please, make sure the cargo, and they beam the cargo over before saving the people, because <laughs> that's what they wanted. Or, uh, well, they manipulated the Enterprise into beaming the barrels first of the stuff. And then you find out, well, what's the reason? Why is it so precious? Well, these are two planets that have a symbiosis. Uh, where one planet provides them with uh, medicine for this plague that they're all infected with. 
Um, and, uh, well, the upshot of it is uh, that there was a plague long ago with this planet that was far advanced than the one that's providing uh, the medicine uh, in which they developed spaceships and all that stuff. But they did get hit by this terrible plague. Uh, and it also affected the other planet, but the other planet came up with a treatment for it on this, uh, you know, it's an indigenous, uh, I don't know, plant or whatever that they're able to uh, derive uh, this medication from. And uh, it cures it, but they just didn't really let the other uh, planet, the more advanced one, in on that. <laughs> And the the part the up the, the bad part about the cure is that it's it's very uh, addictive, so you got to be careful with it. Well, uh, the more advanced planet, they're all desperate for the sickness and stuff they're suffering, and so they just take the the medicine and then become uh, powerfully addicted to it. And uh, little do they know, generations later, <laughs> the actual plague itself has long since been wiped out. They're immune to it, but they're hooked on uh, the drug, and the other planet. Uh, has been making bank off of this ever since. And uh, so, of course, Beverly discovers this, and then Picard explains, well, okay, Beverly, this is a rotten deal they've set up, but uh, we can't interfere, prime directive and everything. And he, he gives a, a, a fairly decent little lecture on that, which within the philosophy of it, he's right. Um but in the end, uh, the problem with the uh, society that was once more advanced than the other is that they've all fallen down. They'd, all they care about is their quote-unquote medicine. And uh, they don't know how to repair their old ships and everything. They're all falling apart and stuff because everyone's become stupid and ignorant <laughs> of how to maintain it. And at first, the Enterprise was going to provide them with repair parts, but then Picard, which they should have realized at the get-go... <laughs> Um, is uh, Picard at the end says, no, you can't have that. And they go, wait, 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 our ships are dying. We won't be able to transport the medicine anymore. And he says, well, you'll have to figure it out, but we, we're, we're, uh, we're forbidden from interfering, you know. And then, like, the drug dealers are like, hey, you, you've got to help them. He said, no, we don't. And they're like, damn. And so, <laughs> so they beam them down and they let, they let them take the medicine for now, you know, but they don't have any workable ships anymore. <laughs> So, hey, <laughs> that's your problem. <laughs> so, so that, you know, it had its moments and stuff like that. So it's interesting. Uh, the, the, the alien, the, the alien had this uh, natural ability to, I guess, electrocute one another through their hands, <laughs> which, uh, and then the, the Enterprise crew is like, oh, I've never seen that from humanoids before. Well, that's a little odd because I guess they just aren't to up on their uh, their history because in the old show, uh, you know, the the black and white guys with Frank Gorshin, <laughs> they would zap each other with their hands. Now, granted, uh, they, they were black and white in skin color, <laughs> uh, but still, they were humanoid beings, but they had this ability to, you know, I don't know, give off electricity or what have you. Uh, but anyway, it's a minor thing. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, but Ultimately, they bring in Wesley <laughs> just to have a scene for Wesley to talk to uh, Natasha. I don't know. Why do people turn to drugs? And so she basically gives Wesley a don't just say no to drugs, Wesley. <laughs> and she tries to explain about, well, it feels good at first, but then soon you're you're only taking it just to feel normal. And, you know, <laughs> or something like that. You know, and it was just. Yeah, uh, talk about on the nose, you know. But anyway, in case you didn't get it, <laughs> these people were completely under the thumb of the other planet because of their addiction. See, see where that leads. <laughs> so anyway, it was all right. I, yeah, I guess you know. But you know, you're gonna have some bumps and scrapes along the way but anyway and of course notable because of the actors that were in there you know that kind of thing but uh eh, well i don't know between the two i mean they both had their high points i don't know if it gets like arsenal of freedoms the better one maybe i don't know but then again i don't know that they both had again they both have strong uh concepts uh in them so i guess it's a draw <laughs>